Coming up, we've got some hotly awaited phones, including the Galaxy S4 and the first phone to feature Facebook Home. Plus, is this a Surface? No, it's a Seuss. It's all next on Before You Buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 20 million high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, visit Shutterstock.com and use the offer code Before You Buy 5. Yeah, da 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 da. The phone you can't put down. The HTC first is a phone where Facebook comes first. We gave it to Tony Wang, who is rapidly becoming the king of Android on this show. We give you all the uh, all the Android phones, but you carry a Windows phone day to day yeah. now, right? You, I'm, you, I'm both Android and Windows. All right. So. Well, now are you a big Facebook user? Because I think that's the I big question. I was not. Okay. All right. Yeah. We gave him the HTC first, and this is his review. Tony Wayne from Toyota TV, and before you buy, and today I'm reviewing the HTC first, the first Facebook home phone. The first is a pretty standard mid-range Android phone. It's got mid-range specs in this sort of soft feel, minimalistic design, and uh, really reminds me of the HTC 8X, but more polished like a bar of soap. Facebook Home is a launcher, essentially, made by Facebook to integrate Facebook into Android. On paper, it sounds horrible. Nobody wants to do that. Everywhere you look, it's Facebook. And I gave it the benefit of the doubt, and I actually tried it for a few weeks, and I love it. Oh, I hate to say that, but I do love it. I actually became a heavy Facebook user now, and there's a few tricks for Facebook Home. You really have to sort of go in there and tweak your notification system and see what what kind of updates you're getting. And if you master that, then you'll be able to use Facebook Home effectively. Like if you follow all news feeds, you know, things will actually just show up on your lock screen. And it's beautifully implemented and you can very easily just thumb up all these things or leave comments or follow the news on your news feed. Just see what's going on out there with your friends. So you really do have to manage who you're following on Facebook so you don't get random people's, like their kids, and you're like, who are these people? I don't remember following these people. The best part of Facebook Home is the chat heads. Uh, and they're, they're really, they're very convenient, but at the same time, they're very, very annoying. So your mileage might vary. You would either love it like I do, or you would hate it, like majority of the world. One of the features that not everybody talk about with the chat heads is that you can actually use it as your default message, message client. So you can actually use it for your SMS. And I know the chat heads are actually already on Facebook Messenger on all Android phones, but you would notice that after a while of not using them, they actually kind of go away. When Facebook Messenger is turned off in the background, it's not running in the background. On the HTC first, you have permanent chat heads. It's awesome. Pros and cons of the HTC first, it is the first Android phone running full Facebook home experience. It is mid-range, so it's very affordable. It's $99 with a two-year contract. And the pro that most people don't know about is that it's very easy to turn off Facebook home and you get vanilla Android 4.1. So this is pretty much one of the few vanilla Android phones you can get from a carrier. Con, um, there isn't much con. Uh, I guess you can say the screen is too small. It's 4.3 inch. There's no expandable storage or removable battery. So buy, try, or don't buy for the HTC first, I'm gonna give it a buy. Uh, not only because it's the first phone with full Facebook home experience, you can also just turn it off and there'll be vanilla Android. 
I'm telling you for $2 TV and before you buy, and this is the HTC first. You said it's like a bar of soap. It is kind of, and yeah. I find it curiously refreshing. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me ask you, did you change your Facebook behavior in any way? Some people have said, with this being on the front page, you might want to subscribe to more news organizations, for instance, and get a different kind of uh, feed on the front page. Yeah, so it really depends on what you have coming in your news feed, and you can you know, set that up on Facebook. So you might manipulate this a little exactly. bit to give you yeah. the images or the information that you're looking for. Right, exactly. This also is unique because even though you could put uh, a Facebook home on some other Android phones, not all, but some other Android phones, they don't have the hooks that this HTC first has with the yeah. notifications and exactly. so forth. Did you notice that? I mean, did that make a difference for yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, so you'll, you'll get, when you when I get a notification, you actually, it actually pops up. Right. When, you, when you're um. So I mean. As you said, you could turn off Facebook Home, but I don't think anybody's going to buy this phone to turn off Facebook Home. Yeah. Um, so you really are you reviewing it as a phone standalone or as a Facebook phone? It was as, phone. A, as a Facebook Home. Yeah, and a you phone. liked it. Yeah, I liked it. Are you going to put Home on your uh, Android? Device? Um, yes. Maybe as soon as it's available. It's not on the Nexus Four. <laughs> right. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Tony Wang is our editor in chief. It is kind of a nice feeling phone. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like the yeah. 8X. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. It's r similar to the 8X, isn't yeah. it? Who, is it HTC that may? Oh, it is yeah, HTC, HTC, so it's an HTC yeah. device. Uh, thank you, Tony, editor-in-chief of uh, all many of our shows and editor of many of our shows and editor-in-chief of all of our shows. Is that a fair thing to say? doesn't mean you sure. edit them, you just chief them. Yeah, I chief yeah, them. Yeah, you're chiefing. You're chiefing the phones. Uh, our next review uh, is of a uh, tablet that looks to me very much like Microsoft's Surface tablet. It even runs Windows 8. We thought we'd give it to uh, Ayaz Akhtar of Tech News Today and Know How and find out what he thinks of the Asus VivoTab Smart. Yes. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and today I've got the Asus VivoTab. It's over here. There's a nice little cover accessory and a keyboard. Let's actually talk about the tablet. This is around $450, uh, and it's running full Windows 8 because there's an Intel Atom processor inside. It's got a 10.1-inch screen. 1366 by 768 display. That's actually really good for a screen this size. I found the viewing angles to be fantastic. It's really bright when you need it to be. The styling on this is pretty muted. If you've ever seen an Asus product like the Nexus 7, you've seen this before. It's kind of a rubberized back, kind of easy to hold, pretty comfortable in the hand. It's got an eight megapixel camera on the back. If you like taking pictures like this, you can. Two megapixel camera on the front. Otherwise, there's one word to describe this unremarkable. There's a bunch of tablets like this in this in the space right now, so there's really no reason to say, oh, this is the one you should get, because there's a lot of tablets like this. As this device is under $500, what you're going to get here is a pretty standard experience. You're not going to have this as your workhorse machine. It does have an Intel processor, so you do have a desktop mode, run all your Windows apps, but then again, not super powerful, so you're not going to be doing crazy things like video editing and compositing on this little guy. It's kind of like your second or third machine that you have around the house. One of the gimmicks that ASUS does have with this tablet is a line of accessories. They have this keyboard, which actually is magnetic. It goes to the front of that, and they have this cover, this origami-like cover. So I'm going to attach this easily because right, it's magnetic and all kind of holds itself together like this and like a little sandwich kind of deal so what you do with the cover is you try to shape it so you can hold this screen up but the keyboard itself is bluetooth it doesn't actually connect to this at all it's not like magnetic a bit of flex to it the uh, travel on the keyboard a little shallow for my liking but very good so the pros for this device, it's comfortable. I find it pretty comfortable in the hand. It's light. Uh, it does charge using a micro USB port. I think that's kind of neat. You don't need any proprietary things there. On the cons, like I said, uh, somewhat unremarkable in styling. It's not exactly uh, a leader in any class. And it does come with some buggy software from ASUS. The ASUS camera is laughably slow. You can hit the shutter button and then you wait and you wait and you wait. And then after two or three seconds, it does take a picture. You're better off using the built-in camera app from Microsoft. If you do opt to get the optional cover, you should know something about the magnet. Not super strong. This thing comes apart very easily. If you just jostle it, it'll come apart. I'm not a big fan of that when it comes to a tablet potentially being dropped. Like I mentioned, the tablet itself it costs about $450 if you find it on Amazon. 
and these two accessories are bundled together, but they cost a separate $100. So altogether, you're looking at $550 if you want to have this whole package. So is the Asus Vivo Tab Smart a try, buy, or don't buy? It's definitely a try. If you're looking for a workhorse machine, this isn't it. But if you're looking for a second PC to have around the living room, this is pretty good. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and this was the Asus Vivo Tab Smart. Thank you, Ayaz. Ayaz and Tony's reviews are in full on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash before you buy. In fact, uh, all of our reviews are always there individually uh, in their full uh, glory, youtube.com slash before you buy. Greg Burnett is uh, one of our uh, interns here, and we gave him a little mouse. In fact, we got a mouse and a keyboard, both from a company called Rocat or Rockat. Let's take a look at the Rockat Coney Plus mouse. Hi, this is Greg with Twit, and before you buy, and I am reviewing the Rocket Comb Plus PC gaming mouse. Its primary feature is the Easy Shift Plus button, and this button is located just above the thumb on the left side of the mouse. Uh, Basically, what it does is when pressed, it turns the rest of the buttons on the mouse into macro functions. The Cone Plus features a 6000 DPI laser, which makes it very responsive, but unfortunately, at its price point, is a little bit expensive. Another cool feature about this mouse um, is it has a whole range of LED colors that it can display along the sides here. And now for my pros and cons. For my pros, my first would have to be the Easy Shift Plus button. It allows for this mouse to have a whole arsenal of macros and abilities that it can perform while playing PC games. Um, as someone who plays a lot of MMOs, having a button on my mouse solely dedicated to activating a trinket uh, is really awesome, and I liked that a lot. Secondly, this is a very well-built mouse. It comes with weights, um, so if you like your mouse lighter or heavier, uh, you have that ability to adjust it. And finally, uh, its ability to pair with other Rocket devices. And now for my cons. Now while this is a well-built mouse that's really responsive, it's a bit expensive at its price point of $89.99. And also, its LEDs can get a little annoying, especially if you're pairing it with the Rocket keyboard, which also comes with LEDs. There can be an actual light show happening at your desk while you're playing video games. And finally, it has poor ergonomics. As someone who plays with their whole entire palm on the mouse, there's really no room for all of my fingers. And I often found myself hanging them off to the side or putting them in awkward positions to move the mouse around. If I was going to give this mouse a buy, try, or don't buy, I'd give this mouse a try. Because a lot of my issues with this mouse are preference. Um, I don't like particularly where my fingers sit on it, but you might like it. Um, and overall, it's a good gaming mouse, and it has a lot of flexibility when it comes to customization. This has been Greg with Twit. See you next time on Before You Buy. I, I like this. Pretty mouse. Too bad it's so expensive. That is a lot to spend. $90 for a mouse. So we gave, gave uh, Greg's brother Radford... The keyboard and <laughs> Craig's brother. I just, just mess. I'm just messing with his real brother, who's running the the board here, just to see if he'd do anything. Angry. What is he? Cranky hippo? Is that what I always call him? Angry hippo. Cranky. Cranky? Hungry. <laughs> Hungry hippo. All right. Uh, we, yeah, we Brad, Radford will uh, review the uh, Rocket or Rockat Isku keyboard. That kind of is the pair of that cat in just a second. Before he does, though, I want to talk a little bit about Shutterstock. Now, Mr. Burnett, if you would pull up Shutterstock.com, I think you'll find something pretty amazing here. Not just 20 million images, uh, photos, illustrations, vectors, video clips, but a search engine that lets you search for things like not just names, but emotions and color. They've got a color wheel that lets you uh, find, uh, you know, objects within a palette. So what are you going to search for? Angry, cranky hippo? They're just cranky. That's just cranky. Just searching for cranky. Brian, Brian searched for cranky. <laughs> I don't think we'd already looked before for cranky hippos. I think they're, well, yeah. they're, they're cranky. They had angry hippos, but not There's cranky. a cranky baby. <laughs> now, if you look at the color wheel, you could say, I only want to see cranky babies with a blue palette, for instance. So you have to log in to do that. Oh. By the way, free to log in, make an account. Might be a good idea. 10,000 new images every day. So every time you visit, you're going to find, 
She doesn't look cranky. She's just scary. <laughs> You're going to find uh, something new every time you visit. Now, they have a number of different ways to buy at Shutterstock. You can choose individual image packs if you say, I know, you know, I know how many I need. But I recommend, and I have, in fact, the monthly subscription. That's 25 images a day, for instance, with my standard subscription. Great for bloggers or um, anybody who's putting out content on a regular basis, newspapers, magazines. In fact, you'll see quite a few publications use Shutterstock for their stock images. Royalty-free means pay once, use it in any way you want. Sophisticated search tools, that spectrum tool I mentioned that lets you sort images by color spectrum, a great way to get ideas and inspiration. That's free, all free to browse. The shareable light boxes make it great to work with a team or even just to share images for a later use. And you got to check out their Webby Award-winning iPad app, which lets you search on the, on the go Save those images back to your light box and have them for uh, presentations and other times. Truly a global enterprise. They are all over the world, more than a dozen countries, including Germany and China and Italy and Brazil and Be Belgium. They have multilingual customer support, dedicated corporate reps, and full-time customer support throughout the week. Shutterstock is fabulous. Search for cranky <laughs> blue hippos. I don't know if you'd find them, but you can you can do it anyway. No credit card needed to sign up for a free. Oh look, there's an angry purple hippo. He looks more loving than angry. Oh, you can put any emotion in that box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Start an account. Use Shutterstock to help imagine what your next project could be like. Save your favorite images to a light box to review later. If you decide to buy, do use our offer code before you buy five. Since we're in the fifth month, before you buy five and get this, this is amazing. You'll get 30% off any package on a new account. That is great. Shutterstock.com. 30% off new accounts when you use the offer code, one word, before you buy and the number five. And we thank Shutterstock for their support of Before You Buy. All right, let's get Radford out here. He's got a keyboard to review. The Rocket Isku FX. Radford? Hi, I'm Radford Castro, the engineering manager at Twit. I'm here to review the Rocket Isku FX. So the Rocket Isku FX is actually a keyboard designed for the gamer you, particularly hardcore PC gamers that are looking to customize their gaming experience for a variety of genres on the PC gaming world. Uh, it has a variety of profiles that you can customize, as well as macros that work well with the profiles, and you can quickly switch back and forth between these profiles. Um, so it's right there you know, in the end with a lot of the gaming keyboards that are out there in terms of customization, particularly the driver software. But uh, unfortunately, on the design side, you know, as beautiful as it looks on the outside uh, using eliminated keys, uh, the keys themselves, in particular the macro keys, are very close to the, you know, regular keyboard layout. So if you're the type of person that presses a lot of shift and control buttons, particularly like in an FPS game, you're going to be hammering a couple of these macro keys. And these macro keys are programmed to do, I don't know, rocket jumping. You'll be doing that very often when you're actually out in the field of your favorite FPS, FPS game. If you're into the more RTS side, it might work out for you, especially since you won't be using a lot of the keys on the left. And depending on if you're using an MMO and you do a lot of customizations yourself, this keyboard could work for you. Uh, there are a couple of things that do stand out design-wise in terms of you have a lot of keys that are all over the place in terms of being able to control media. So you have the ability to manage your media player right off the bat, as well as going through recording your macros and being able to switch profiles. There's even indicator lights on the keyboard itself where you can see which profile you're running at the time. Each profile is then, of course, uh, mapped to particular macros, and each of the macros change depending on which profile you use. So Particularly if you have five favorite games that you're five favorite games that you're playing, you can actually uh, select the profile that you want, and then select the macros that work perfectly for the game that you're playing. Pros and cons. On the pro side, you have the cool thing is that it's very customizable, and the nice thing about it too is the fact that you can switch profiles at any time, um, literally instant instantaneously. Um, on the con side, the design, you know, is kind of iffy for me. Uh, Part of it because of the layout of the keys. That's really what it boils down to. So I would give this a try. And mainly because of the fact that not everyone will have the same issues I will have in terms of the keys layout. Some people might love having the keys next to your pinkies or their thumb. Uh, for me, particularly, it's, it's, I just wish the keys were a little bit more to the side. So that was the review of the Rocket Isku FX. From before you buy, I'm Radford Castro. 
our engineering ma manager and one of our newest employees, Radford Castro. He's been a really great uh, addition to the team, and we love to give him things to review. Thank you, Radford, for your review. If you have something you'd like to see reviewed on Before You Buy, you can email our producer, Shannon Morse. Her email address is byb at twit.tv. In fact, Shannon joins us uh, right now. Hello. She is the queen of fitness. You have every single possible fitness no. device known to man. Liz might be the queen of fitness, but yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get there. You have a Fitbit, the regular one, right? I got the Fitbit one. Yeah. I took that original. to CES. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. It was very accurate. And one of my favorite things about it was it was easy to clip on. Right. And it synced very well. A glorified pedometer, basically. Yeah, basically. So this is the new Fitbit. It's a bracelet version. Of yeah, it's a bracelet, which they've been meaning to make forever. And I'm so glad they finally did it because this is awesome. I love the thing. It's called the Flex. The Fitbit Flex. And rightfully so, because it's very flexible. It's bendy. Yeah, it's bendy. It comes with two different sizes and you can clip it on. With this little so it's more adjustable right than some of these other ones. For instance, the Jawbone Up and the uh, Nike uh, Fuel Band, you, you really, it was like kind of one size fits all. This yeah. could be almost any so size. So this one, it comes with two separate bands, a large and a small band. Everybody's, <laughs> so Liz comes running over with her Jawbone Up. Tony's <laughs> taking off his Nike Fuel Band. Everybody's got oh one gosh, of these. look at all the bands. <laughs> and but look, this is the competition. put them all together and they all look the same. <laughs> and this probably has the same guts, the Motion X guts. That all uh, the that the other ones uh, have as well. Yeah, it probably is the same guy. Yeah. So, so tell us how it works, what it does, show us the software, because it really comes down to software. And yeah, I think Fitbit had the best software previously. I kind of agree. I yeah. really, really like the software. Um, one thing I noticed with this new one is when you actually sync it to your device, it syncs very quickly. It syncs via a lot Bluetooth? faster. Yeah, via mm -hmm. Bluetooth uh, to your iPhone or Android device. Uh, a lot faster than the old Fitbit one, I have right. to say, um, very quickly. The one thing I did miss about this one is click, click. There we go. It's a little bit harder. What are you to click doing? You're not wearing it. Cutting on the little LEDs. Oh, there's look at there's little right LEDs here. on there. And what are they telling you? Uh, this is telling me. <laughs> it's so much harder to you click. Put it back you're on. Not wearing it. <laughs> Yeah. There we go. There, you need something to push against. Yeah, I need some pressure. Is, is that how so many steps you've taken? Those little LEDs shows you I've been using this about 40% uh -huh. of my total daily goal. And my daily goal right now is 10,000. You so said once that I in hit, software. Yeah. Once I hit 10,000 steps, you'll see five LEDs Got blink it. and show up. Um, so this will count your steps. It'll count your sleep sleeping patterns as however many times so you wake up the old fitbit calories. you had a special bracelet you had to put the fitbit into yeah, this one at was least annoying. you just keep that was wearing. one of my cons about the old yeah. one this one you just hold on you put it on you can wear it in the shower because it's waterproof okay unlike the old one which some people washed and killed and does then it so it measures steps it. does it measure altitude as well it upstairs not. it does it not it doesn't measure measure that anymore unfortunately uh, that's something you'll miss with this it also doesn't have a little screen on there so you can't see steps on here you just see a percentage of your so, daily goal so, so that's the actual fitbit the rubber band yeah. isn't even necessary you could put that in your uh yeah and they sell accessories too but in your different pants colors. and you it put would, it in your pants it would still work okay <laughs> now one thing i did notice was with this it has a little bit different accuracy than the Fitbit One, and I think that's just because the Fitbit One you wear on your hip, this you wear on your wrist. Right. You get a little bit different of a step count, okay. but all together, it's still giving you the same um, comp competitive feeling whenever you start friending people on Fitbit. Uh, they also updated their website with the Flex. And this looks a little janky on the iPad right now, but they give you a whole bunch of these different little widgets that you can move around and arrange however you like. So it's a dashboard. Yeah, for you. you get a dashboard. It measures your distance as well. Um, of course, your sleep pattern. It shows floors right here. You'll see zero because I don't think that's counting floors. Calories burned, of course, and then your weight and whatnot as well. Uh, luckily, I didn't put in my weight today. You have to <laughs> manually enter that so that... Yeah. Uh, you manually, manually enter your food and your um, your activity right. every day. Your calories are automatically counted depending on your activity and your steps. So, so far what we have is a pedometer that measures uh, mm -hmm. steps and motion during sleep yep. and a nice app. But tell me about the social part because that's something very different from a regular pedometer. So I haven't friended too many people on this. And that might be because a lot of people haven't purchased these. 
Um, I have a few friends on here. Jeffrey Needles is one of my friends. He always beats me because he bounces around on his ball all day and he gets so many more steps than I do. <laughs> but um, it definitely makes you feel like, oh, man, I need to race them and get a little bit higher step so count. You might actually go out and get a ball, for instance. Yeah, and so sit on I have to... a ball in my office yeah, see? now. <laughs> just so you can compete. Because I want to, I want to get more steps. Than but that's Jeffrey the value Needles of something said. like this. It really does kind of encourage you. <laughs> yeah, it does. To increase your activity. And for ninety nine ninety five, I think it's a really good price point. I think it's um, it's well manageable. It's really easy to wear. I forget about it when I go to the gym, and then I get home and I check it, and I'm like, yeah, I hit my goal. I was so excited. So it makes you feel so much better about yourself. And it, I don't know, I think it's a, just a really good thing to have. There are a lot of choices, that, but as we just mentioned, the Jawbone and the Nike Fuel Band and yes. the Flex. They're mostly kind of the same, maybe some slight differences. They the are, they're very similar to each Fuel other. Band doesn't actually measure steps, it measures fuel points, whatever mm -hmm. that is. I think it has roughly the same. Steps as well. It's pretty similar. Yeah. Right, it says fuel points and steps. I don't yeah. know what the difference is. But the same thing, you set a goal, and what, it, what I've noticed, and I, obviously you have too, is as you get closer to that goal, you kind of, make a point of doing more you do you take yeah. the stairs you walk a little farther you sit on a bouncy ball sit on a bouncy ball <laughs> just so you as can silly as it sounds. do a little bit better and i think that's the kind of change the life change that can make a long term make a huge it really difference does. Yeah. and the uh, battery as well i know some how long do you go on that? that i can go about a week without oh that's a dime. great uh the charging takes about two to three hours usb so. uh yeah it's usb and it comes with a little charging Thing. And then it also comes with a little sinker that you can plug into USB if you don't have a mobile device to sync ah, to. Then it syncs to your computer yeah. via the USB port. Yeah, That's just, just like the old Fitbit. Yeah. And the yeah, clips let's see how it looks. stay pretty well, too. Now, you're probably, you're a lady, you're fashion conscious. Do you think that yeah, that's yeah. attractive, unattractive? I think it's fine. Okay. Um, other I, colors or just black? There are other colors. They have teal, red, a whole bunch of other ones. Right. Uh, you can also purchase this in, I believe, a navy blue t type of color. Uh, they have a pretty orange one, which I actually want to buy. <laughs> so, some uh, loquacious in the chat room says, when you don't meet your daily goal, does it get you down or does it make you want to work harder the next day? It makes me want to work harder the next day. That was my experience yep. too, yeah. It really yeah. does. You want to get that goal every day. And if you don't, you go, I'll get you tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So uh, my pros and cons of, of this, it's a comfortable wristband. I noticed it doesn't really make me sweat anymore underneath it or anything. It's waterproof, which is great. So I never have I to do take like it that. off. Yeah. Um, other than when I want to clean it because it does get kind of gross. Yeah. After you wear it for like a week. And it's very accurate. Um, my cons, it doesn't have that screen. So moving from the Fitbit One to this, you are going to lose that little screen that tells you your step count right there. Yeah, and you had a little flower that grew yeah, and all that stuff that's flower. gone. Now you just have the LEDs that okay. blink at but you. But you also have the app, which does do all those yeah, fancy so things. Yeah, so it's kind of like, well, you're losing the screen, but you're right. still getting the app, it's and it's compact. been updated, yeah. and it syncs faster. So altogether, it's definitely a buy for me. Um, Good. I love the thing, and I'm going to keep wearing it until Good it for dies. You. <laughs> You'd be amazed how many people around here are wearing Fuel bands, yeah, really Fitbits, jawbones. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah. I like it. All right. Thank you, Shannon Moore. She produces this show at Snubs I on do, Twitter. She's yes. also the host of Threat Wire, which you can watch on YouTube, youtube.com slash geek. What is it? Tech Geek? Tech, uh, tech, tech feed. feed. Tech Feed. I was like, what is it? What is the name <laughs> of that? Tech Feed. Uh, and uh, we do that, of course, uh, with Darren Kitchen of <laughs> Hack. Five, great to have you. Thank you. Okay, my turn now. Last week I gave you a 17-minute review of the HTC One. <laughs> this one's not going <laughs> to be do that, that long. This week, I won't do it this week because <laughs> I'm going to review. Uh, and I could, by the way, I could make this a two-hour review. The Samsung Galaxy S4. We watched the live event, that crazy Broadway event where they told the world about the uh, Galaxy uh, S4. Um, and and I finally got one. And actually, I have two. I have uh, a U.S. version. This is the AT&T version. It's uh, the white version um, and uh, this is a four core uh, snapdragon processor with lte capability uh, but the one i'm going to probably use is this this is an unlocked eight core it's an exynos eight processors in here but what you give up of course with eight processors is oh there's shannon uh, what you give up with eight processors is the uh, lte capabilities this is actually one of many photo modes where you can freeze something so you were moving around the TV was moving around, but I said, I'm going to freeze Shannon's head. So you'll see your hands move. Everything's moving, but your head didn't move. You get one expression the whole time. That's one of about a dozen gimmicky photo, oh, that is so weird. photo <laughs> modes in the camera. And I have to say, gimmicky is the word that comes to mind when you look at the Galaxy S4. From In terms of specs, it's pretty amazing.
amazing. You might say this looks a lot like a Galaxy S3. It does. It's very much the Galaxy form factor. They haven't changed that hardly at all. But it is a 5-inch screen. They managed to make the screen bigger while making the phone slightly smaller by going all the way out to the edge. You see the bezels are very thin. Um, the screen almost fills the entire phone. One thing that is a little, I don't know, controversial, I happen to like it, but Samsung still puts physical home buttons on their Android phones. You know, the Google folks try to get rid of all buttons. They want the phones to be all screen, but we still have two capacitive buttons, a menu button and a back button and a single physical home button on the phone. I'm personally pretty used to it, having used a number of Galaxy Sam uh, phones, both the Note, the Note 2, the Galaxy S3, the S2. Wow, quite a few, haven't I? <laughs> I'm in a long line. So this feels very comfortable to me. I actually prefer having physical uh, menu uh, and uh, back buttons as opposed to on-screen buttons. They don't take up as much room. Uh, it's funny, The Verge complained about this back. You see, this is brand new. I already got a lot of fingerprints. This is the uh, the dark-colored one. I, they, I don't they call it the gray mist or something. They have some silly name for it. It's, it's black <laughs> and white, folks. And they complained about the back saying it was slimy. Well, it is a very smooth plastic back. But if you've ever had a Galaxy phone before, you're probably pretty used to it. There's a reason why plastic is a good choice. Last week, I compared it to the beautiful aluminum unibody of the HTC One. And indeed, the HTC One is a gorgeous phone, but it turns out plastic's a better material for use of the phone because for a couple of reasons. One, it doesn't impede the antennas, and your hand doesn't impact it as much either. So you've got NFC works better, the phone's antenna works better, but this is the real reason from my point of view you can pop it off. And this is probably the most significant difference between the HTC One and the Galaxy S4, a removable battery, 2,600 milliamp hours, pretty pretty good battery, uh, but you can always pop in another one if you run out of space, plus room for an SD card. Now, you really need that on this phone because here's the bad news. While the HTC One is available in 32 and 64 gigabyte versions, you'll have to buy the memory you want ahead of time because you can't add memory after the fact, there's only one memory form factor for the Samsung Galaxy S4, a, a very meager 16 gigabytes, but the story's even worse because when you get the phone home, there's only about 8 or 9 gigabytes free. Most of that is used up by the junkware that Samsung has loaded this phone up with. This is an unlocked, there's no carrier on this phone, and it's still just jam-packed with Samsung silliness. And to only have 8 gigs free... On a, on a modern Android phone is a real issue, primarily because Android likes the apps to live on main memory. Now, I did put a 64 gig SD card in here. That means my music and my photos and media can live on the SD card, audio books and so forth. But I still have to have enough memory for my apps. Some apps can be moved, but for the most part, you want to leave apps on the main internal memory. Eight gigs, you'll have to check and see how many apps you've got. If you've got an awful lot, eight gigs might get a little short uh, after time. That's something to really keep in mind. And I think a legitimate criticism of the Samsung Galaxy S4. In terms of features, pretty amazing. This 5-inch screen is 1920 by 1080, 441 dots per inch. Very high resolution. Is it retina? Absolutely. Although, because it's Super AMOLED, it is a pentile display. And if you do look close up, you can see it's perhaps not as crisp as the IPS LCDs display on the uh, HTC One. The One definitely wins in terms of crispness and vibrancy of the display. Uh, on the other hand, it's not exactly a poor display on the Galaxy S4. It is very crisp, very beautiful. Um, there's a lot of functionality built into this phone. You probably saw on the ad, there's a lot of sensors in here. I can wave at the phone. I can look at the phone. It sees my eyes. I can scroll through pages by looking up and down or waving my hand up or down. I could pick up the phone by waving my hand in front of it. To me, a lot of that is just pure gimmickry. I don't really see the need for it. Um, Samsung obviously is looking for ways to differentiate their phone from the competition. And certainly there is a lot of differentiation in here. When you look at the camera app, well, it just goes on and on and on. I showed you the motion feature, but if we look at modes, there's a animated photo. That's what I just showed you. There's rich tone HDR. There's the eraser mode where we can erase stuff that moves through a static picture. There's a panorama mode, pretty stock. A lot of Android phones have that. Sports mode means a faster frame rate. Night mode means a wider aperture. This is a 13 megapixel camera. Uh, that's probably about the highest you're going to see in a lot <laughs> in almost any st standard phone. Best photo is kind of fun. You take uh, a series of pictures, and then you could select one with a smile and so forth. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of an interesting feature. You've probably also seen them talk about 
the best face where you take five consecutive pictures of a group of people and pick the best face from each of those five for each of those people. <laughs> so you have one picture that has them all smiling. A uh, sound and shots weird. You take a static picture, but you have about three seconds of sound in the background. The drama mode is the one they've been take, talking a lot about it, where you have it looks like multi uh, multiple exposures as somebody moves through the frame. That's just the beginning, though. I mean, there's a ton more in here. All sorts of editing features and mode features. All sorts of uh, stuff going on. Uh, it might take you days to learn the camera. In fact, I have to point out that this is one of the few phones that actually comes with. With manuals, three of them, a quick start guide, a handbook, and a full manual. This is more manuals than I got with Windows 8. And you know what? There may be more to learn than there is with Windows 8. This is one of the most le junk laden phones uh, I've ever seen. Now, one man's junk is another man's treasure. And if you are a photographer, some of these photo modes might be really valuable to you. The nice thing is, yeah, you have the wave mode and the don't touch mode and the look mode. And you don't have to use them if you want to take them out. All of these can be turned off off or on. In fact, I have to say, points to the Galaxy S4 compared to the HTC One for flexibility. There are so many settings in here. You can do so many things with this phone that the, the basic manufacturer settings have four tabs total, <laughs> and you could probably put in more. Look at this. If I, if I just uh, play with the notification center, I can add a bunch of different buttons to my drop-down notifications. Wow. This is, if you're looking for a configurable phone, this is very configurable. I mean, you're getting great hardware, removable battery, an SD card, complete configuration capability, a gorgeous 1920 by 1080 screen, up to eight cores. Removable battery means I don't have to worry about battery life, but I'm getting about eight to ten hours. It's at least as good as the HTC One. And, of course, whenever I buy a, a, a Galaxy phone, I usually buy one or two extra batteries so I can keep them in my pocket uh, ready to go. Uh, I think this is a very impressive phone that does things no other Android phone does, including a multi-window feature that lets you run two programs at the same time. This is this is this is as close to a desktop computer uh, as you can get. I haven't fully configured this phone. This one just came today. This is the new unlocked uh, version uh, of the phone. Uh, one other big advantage, in my opinion, of the Samsung Galaxy S4 against the uh, HTC One, it's running Android 4.2.2, the latest version of Jelly Bean. Will only be the latest until Google I/O in a couple of weeks. But hey, it's the latest today. This is uh, the HTC is running 4.12, a considerably older version. I like having the latest. And one of the things that 4.22 does is have live notifications in the uh, drop down. Uh, I find those. Very useful. If you're an Android phone buff, if you've used a Galaxy phone before, I think you're going to like this phone a lot. You can customize the heck out of it, make it work the way you want to. Of course, I'm going to put a different uh, bootloader or a, a launcher on here. I'm probably put Nova Launcher on here, really customize the heck out of it. Uh, it's available on all the carriers. It's not much more expensive. By the way, somebody wondered about the cheesy life companion that you see when you first turn on the phone. You can absolutely change that to your name, to a clock, to anything you want. And Samsung provides these beautiful, see, I've changed it to a clock here, uh, travel lock screens from different parts of the world. That are, That's kind of fun. Yeah. Where is that? That's Rome. Yeah, that's the Trevi Fountain, right? Um, other features that I kind of like, you were talking about uh, your, uh, your Fitbit. There's a Samsung Health app that takes advantages of the sensors in here. This has more sensors than I've ever seen before, including a humidity sensor. I know it's 34% humidity in here. That's the comfort level. It also has a walking mate that'll measure your steps. So I can see that yesterday, for instance, I took 2,912 steps. By the way, very accurate. I could set my goal just as you do with the Fitbit. Shows you distance traveled, number of calories. Um, that's a very nice feature, and it does it just because the accelerometer of the phone works very similarly to the accelerometer in your Fitbit or your uh, or your Nike Fuel Band. That's a nice feature. I like this health. They're going to have additional modules available. It does have a food tracker. You can enter in your weight and so forth. That's one of a number of additional applications that Samsung builds into it. Uh, a, a scanner, for instance, and and <laughs> just a lot of junk wear on here. But I couldn't wear it to the gym, though. You really? Well, I don't know. You might. You might. Uh, you should definitely get an SD card because you're going to want more storage. It comes with very little storage. It's very fast, very fluid, a gorgeous screen. Um, I have to say, on the pros and cons, on the pros, this is absolutely the best Galaxy phone ever made. Of course it is. It's the most recent. It's thin. It's light. Don't 
don't listen to The Verge. That's not slimy. But if you don't like it, there's a variety of cases and covers. I've, I've ordered, it's not available yet. I hope it will be ordered, uh, available in time for the review, a cover that has a peekaboo hole in it and can use a feature of the Super AMOLED that only part of the screen lights up. So you can actually put that cover on and see what time it is with the cover closed. Um, there's certainly a lots of ways you can make this back be more palatable if you don't like plastic backs. Since we always put our phones in a case anywhere, well, anyway, I don't really mind that it's a plastic phone. But yeah, okay, so that's a con. It's not quite as gorgeous as the HTC One. A lot, too, a lot of uh, junkware on here. I guess that's a con, although you don't have to use any of it. And for some people, maybe that's uh, something you'd really want on your uh, phone. Um, the screen really is beautiful. That's a definite pro on here. The removable battery and the uh, ability to add an SD card is a definitely a pro for this. Uh, a powerful, fast phone, state-of-the-art features. I think Samsung's got a winner here. It's a definite buy. But that's not the question most of you are asking. Most of you want to know... Well, which should I buy, the HTC One or the Galaxy S4 or maybe something like the Nexus 4, Google's own vanilla experience, which is half as much as uh, these phones. I bought this phone, by the way, unlocked for $800. Wow. $800. You can get it depending on your carrier for $200, $250, $250 subsidized with a two-year contract. Um, I would say that it depends on you. If you want a kind of a more... Uh, uh, customizable experience. The Galaxy S4 really is desirable in that regard. It is it is 422. It is a lot easier to get this to a pure Google experience uh, than the HTC One. HTC Sense really mucks up the works and in many respects can't be removed from here. Uh, they tie you down a little bit. On the other hand, in terms of fit and finish, there's, there's nothing more beautiful than the HTC One. Camera-wise, it's interesting. The HTC One has a 4-megapixel camera, the Galaxy S4 is a 13-megapixel camera. I think they're both very good cameras. Uh, they both have a lot of features. There's no doubt the HTC One wins in low light, and most of your photography is in low light. It's not in broad daylight, but inside, indoors. I like the camera a little bit better on the HTC One. I love the Zoe feature, which is not present on the Samsung Galaxy S4. So on camera, fit and finish the HTC One better. It really is going to depend on your personality. You want a customizable power tool for a real geek, you're going to get the Galaxy S4. If you're more desirous of something that's beautiful and feels good in the hand and is kind of a work of art, this is much more like an iPhone, the HTC One. Um, you're just going to have to decide for yourself. I'm keeping them both. That's my review <laughs> of the Galaxy S4. Uh, pretty nice phone, I have to say. Um, it's so much like the old Galaxy. I was a little less excited about it. I thought, I want a new form factor. I want it to look a little bit different. It doesn't. But on the other hand, it's like an old friend back in my pocket. And it's going to stay there for some time to come. <laughs> hey, I thank you for joining us on uh, Before You Buy. I want to thank all of our reviewers, Radford and Greg, Tony, and uh, and and Shannon. And I'm missing uh, Ayaz Akhtar also gave us a review. Greg. Who else have I missed? That's everybody. That's everybody? Thank you for joining us. We do this show. Oh, who? You said Greg. I You're said good. Greg? Okay. <laughs> I, I don't want to miss anybody. All of our great staff members. Uh, we want to thank you, though, most of all. We do this show because of you. I hope you'll join us on Tuesday afternoons right about 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time when we record the show. But if you can't, on-demand audio and video available not only on our website, twit.tv slash BYB, but as I mentioned, all the reviews in their entirety and chopped up so that each product has its own video available at youtube.com slash before you buy. Email us at byb at twit.tv. I'm Leo Laporte. Remember, you gotta watch before you buy. See you next time.